to the best of our knowledge, Khayyam himself never wrote down his poetry. If he did, we certainly do not have a copy of it. At best, his students may have copied some of these rubayat. The earliest sources in which we read about uh, Khayyam's poetry are about a century after his death. And this is rather a peculiar element that if he was a poet of some fame, he must have been mentioned by some of his contemporaries who do refer to him as a mathematician and a scientist, but never as a poet. Uh, could this be because he was concerned about his life, uh, he was trying to be conservative? It is possible. It is also possible, as some of the scholars recently have noted, that there may have been several Omar Khayyams. Uh, in fact, we know that there was another uh, poet by the same name living in Neshabur, uh, and could he have been the author of some of these Rubaiyat? It is, it is entirely possible. If we look at whatever historical uh, references we have dating from the time of Omar Khayyam or uh, from these centuries, um, well, it's amazing actually to realize that nobody mentions that Omar Khayyam might have written poetry. Um, the historical uh, references made to Omar Khayyam refer to him as a bad-tempered, but that's uh, maybe beside the point, but as a scientist, um, as a very serious and clearly very uh, religious person. So our idea is that um, there is not one person who's been writing all these poetry. Um, it's a it's a general um, melting pot. I could, I could almost call it that way of uh, thoughts and ideas that have been bubbling up all over the uh, Iranian-speaking world or Persian-speaking world, I should say, um, so over several centuries. Obviously, we are duty-bound as scholars to make sure what exactly are the number of uh, quatrains that he actually said and what are uh, their numbers and their content as painstakingly have been ascertained by scholars. But when we talk about the symbolic or iconic significance of a poet in a culture at large, we cannot just readily dismiss uh, a whole series of poems that have been attributed to him, particularly quatrains that have been attributed to him. And uh, they are beautiful, they are compelling, they are on the model as if Khayyam had, had said them. My personal belief is that Khayyam wrote Rubaiz. He probably wrote somewhere between 150 to 250 Rubaiz, but that he deliberately kept these on the margins of his activity and was not after making himself a name as a poet. I think in them he posited questions that pleased him when asked more than the answer that might be provided. Daryab ke az ruh juda khai raft Dar parde asrar fana khai raft می نوش ندانی ز کجا آمده ای خوش باش ندانی به کجا خواهی رفت ربای or a quatrain is uh, the shortest form of poetry in Persian literature it consists of four parts four stanzas, uh, two hemistiches. Uh, traditionally, Rubai's all rhymed, all the four parts rhyme. But by the time of Omar Khayyam, only, or what, or I should say, one of the salient features of Omar Khayyam's Rubai, what distinguishes him from uh, other types of uh, Rubai's is the fact that the first, the second, and the fourth do rhyme, but the third one does not. Uh, this rather short and powerful form of uh, poetry has a, a powerful punch to it. Uh, it it uh, sends a message in a very clear, concise uh, way and uh, Khayyam's genius was precisely to pack so much into so little. 
voice of Hayyam in the entire gamut of uh, Persian literary output is very rare. We don't have a, a single one like him. I mean, there are other pe uh, people, uh, poets, who have experimented with uh, Quatrain, Baba Afzal Kashani, uh, Baba Tahir Oryan, etc. But none of them has the clarity, the precision, and the absolute elegance of uh, Omar Khayyam's uh, poetic voice. In that regard, he is uh, a singular voice and very, very rare. Khayyam's poetry has been the object of admiration and condemnation. Each successive generation after Khayyam has made literal, metaphorical, and symbolic interpretations of his poetry and has reinvented Khayyam's image and message to fit and serve its own political, intellectual ambitions and aspirations. Through interpretation of his poetry, Khayyam has been labeled as a Sufi, mystic, atheist, and devout Orthodox Muslim, all in one breath. Notably, prominent metaphors such as the beautiful woman, the beloved, and wine that appear in the Robayat have been subject to many interpretations. In my opinion, Khayyam's message, both philosophically and aesthetically, is that we need to pay close attention to the things around us. Even the simplest of things, a growing flower, even the most the most stable of things, a pot, a pottery shop, can provide us occasions for thinking about human destiny and for asking the basic philosophical questions of where do we come from, where are we likely to go, and what are we doing here, what's the meaning of our existence. I think in the end Khayyam is telling us that if there is a meaning, it's in human life. Otherwise, there's that random darkness of of existence. It is human beings that bestow meaning on life and on, on all of existence, not only their own, but on animal existence as well, on the human imagination through its fantasy of the afterlife or of higher orders of existence. And as such, I think in Khayyam we see the kind of mind that moves from the observable and the minute to the unknowable and to the universal. It is there that we see the functioning of the human intellect. Khayyam has a hard time to believe in anything transcending human intellect, although that, that vein and strain does exist in Persian literature. But it is the doubting, the not knowing, that instigates his questions, and it's that questioning that gives life its ultimate meaning.